If there's one phrase that can strike fear into the heart of gamers besides Red Ring of Death, it's video game movie. There's a long history of bad movies adapted from good games, so naturally, when a Warcraft movie was announced, people were cautious. And here we are, after 10 years of on and off development, director changes, script changes, the Warcraft movie is finally set to hit theaters. I'm Alan with Cinematica, and today we're getting ready for the epic adaptation. Are you a diehard fan of the games? Just wondering if it's worth the price of admission? We've got something for everyone as we count down the 107 facts you should know about Warcraft. Let's get started. Number 1. Warcraft is directed by Duncan Jones and written by both Jones and Charles Leavitt, who have some respected credits to their names. Jones is best known for co-writing and directing Moon, starring Sam Rockwell, and Leavitt wrote Blood Diamond, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Number 2. The international title for the movie is Warcraft The Beginning, which may be a sign that Universal wants to make this into a franchise at some point. That doesn't sound too much like Universal's usual game plan. Number 3. This film was first announced all the way back in 2006 with the partnership between Legendary Pictures and Blizzard Entertainment. Legendary Pictures would acquire the rights to the film, while Blizzard assisted in development. Number 4. Blizzard Entertainment is a developer and publisher of software notable for popular releases such as World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, and Hearthstone. Number 5. Several investors line up for this film, including Tencent Pictures and China Film Group, the latter making an eight-figure investment in the film. And why wouldn't they? Number 6. Does Blizzard's Warcraft universe remind you of Tolkien a little bit? Well, one of the company's inspirations early on was J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings Volume 1. Number 7. As of 2007, it was said the film would not be set in the era of Warcraft, Orcs, and Humans. There were notions that it would be too similar to The Lord of the Rings and that Warcraft had reached its current level of popularity through World of Warcraft, rather than the previous real-time strategy games. Number 8. However, nine years later, it's the direct inspiration for the movie. Warcraft Orcs and Humans, which released in 1994, was a real-time strategy game taking place in the Kingdom of Azeroth. Number 9. The decision to draw on the real-time strategy game and not on the more popular World of Warcraft comes from the nature of the massive online games being open-ended and lacking a true story climax. Number 10. Orcs and Humans spawned a sequel, Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness which won the company's first Game of the Year award in 1995. Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos, released in July 2002, and along with StarCraft, became a major milestone in professional tournament gaming along with its expansion, Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne in 2003. Maybe we'll see adaptations of these as well. Number 11. Two Warcraft books were used as sources for the movie. They are Rise of the Horde, which tells of the Orcish Horde origins, and The Last Guardian, which focuses on the human side. Number 12. The success of the Warcraft franchise has spawned other properties such as toys, comics, novels, and the World of Warcraft trading card game, which launched in 2006. Number 13. At BlizzCon 2008, Mike Morhaime, president and co-founder of Blizzard, announced that a script was done. Yes, 2008. We didn't get the actual movie for another six years, but hey, at least they got the script done nice and early, right? Number 14. Before its 2016 release date, the movie was set for release in 2009 and the later rescheduled to 2011 due to scheduling conflicts and other errors. Number 15. In 2009, Blizzard Entertainment announced that Sam Raimi would serve as the film's director, but in July 2012, he told Crave Online that he had withdrawn due to committing to the movie Oz the Great and Powerful, which is really too bad because I feel like WoW could have had an Evil Dead vibe to it. Number 16. In 2013, Raimi revealed that a lot of pre-production work was done by him and the script was written by Robert Rodette, but Blizzard effectively vetoed their work and he largely blamed it on their mismanagement. Number 17. While Raimi is no longer involved in the film, there have been hints that a Raimi-themed Easter egg may be in the movie as a tip of the hat to the former director. Number 18. Notorious Razzie winning director Yu Bull made a bid to direct but was turned away by Blizzard who said we will not sell the movie rights to you. Not to you. Especially not to you. Probably a good call since the video game movie market can't take another hit. Number 19. Jones took over as the director and this will be his third feature film. His previous work includes the previously mentioned Moon as well as 2011 Source Code starring Jake Gyllenhaal both of which were critically acclaimed despite their smaller box office takes. Number 20. Jones is the son of famous rock star and cultural icon David Bowie. So when you watch the high fantasy world of Warcraft, just think of David Bowie as the Goblin King. Dance, magic dance. Number 21. Jones was brought on while he was pitching a different movie. He happened to ask about this movie because he was a fan of the game and of fantasy movies in general. Well played, Jones. Number 22. When playing World of Warcraft, Jones prefers the warrior class. In fact, in every MMO he's played, Jones has chosen the warrior class. He admits that 
he's boring when it comes to that. When most people want to do magic and spells, he says, just give me an axe and let me hit things. Number 23. Jones has been pretty ambiguous with Easter eggs, but has hinted that there may or may not be a Drainer tie-in to the movies, Lords of Drainer being the most recent expansion at the time of writing this. Number 24. Jones has big shoes to fill when it comes to fantasy franchises. He looks up to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy for raising the fantasy bar so high, but he also feels that it might also be more difficult for him because the World of Warcraft community is much more active than the Lord of the Rings community. Number 25. Jones' previous films have been described as very intimate. Jones was involved with the writing in the Warcraft movie and began like he did with his other works with the characters first. According to Jones, the only way it works is if the audience cares about these characters. Number 26. Warcraft was actually inspired by Facebook. Well, kind of. After Jones saw the social network, he was confident he could make a large-scale film of an RPG. He said, the source of your material is not necessarily going to dictate whether you can make a good movie, it's finding an element of truth in it or a thread which you can build a story around. And heck, Facebook can do it. Number 27. When going through the expansive lore of Warcraft, Jones expressed the biggest challenge was finding something truthful and unique in Duncan's eyes. Number 28. Jones described the complexity of the film as being comparable to Game of Thrones mixed with Avatar. So super complicated then. Got it. Number 29. Duncan was thrilled to shift gears and work on Warcraft. Having just done source code, he was getting requests from all over to do another source code movie or another sci-fi film, but Duncan simply said, I didn't want to do that anymore. Number 30. Duncan wants this to be one of those films that pushes the boundaries of modern technology, like Avatar or Star Wars. According to him, in a few years, another film will come around to push the envelope, but today, this film will be it. Number 31. When asked how it feels to be in a film of this scale with two production companies and Blizzard Entertainment to answer to, Jones said that it was not that much different from working on Source Code, as the film also had two production companies. He goes on saying, no matter how big a film is, you're always fighting against budget constraints. Number 32. A while back, Jones was part of a guild in a game called Ultima Online, the guild that moved to EverQuest before settling in Warcraft. Jones is no longer part of that guild, but was hinting that there may be an Easter egg in the film related to that. Number 33. If you're also wondering which faction Jones plays, it's both. He started out as an alliance and then switched to Horde and then kind of goes on again off again. Number 34. Before Raimi and Jones were approached to direct, a popular rumor was that Steven Spielberg was going to direct, or at least considered it. Spielberg is one of the many celebrities who have admitted that they played the game in the past. That list includes Felicia Day, Dave Chappelle, Brandon Roth, etc. Like all rumors, this one faded away when Duncan was chosen. Number 35. Chris Metzen is the lead story writer at Blizzard and also provides a lot of voices for the Warcraft series. He is also in charge of the story for the upcoming Warcraft film. Number 36. Metzen may also have a cameo in the movie, at least if Jones has anything to say about it, and he's the director, so he does. Number 37. Gary Witta, known for work on the Book of Eli and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, actually wrote a script for the movie, but it was scrapped when Raimi took over. Number 38. Witta's script included a character named Private Jenkins, which was a reference to the infamous World of Warcraft character Leroy Jenkins. Number 39. Saving Private Ryan writer Robert Rodette also tried his hand at a script, but that was ultimately scrapped as well. You starting to notice a pattern? Number 40. Finally, Charles Leavitt was brought in. In addition to the previously mentioned Blood Diamond, he also wrote Seventh Son, another fantasy sci-fi film with an impressive cast. His arrival to the project brought hope to fans that maybe, just maybe, the movie would finally get made. Number 41. Colin Farrell was approached for the role of King Lane, and he even met with the director and read the script. Ultimately, he was not cast, and Dominic Cooper then took the role. Number 42. In one of the weirder early stages of casting, it seemed like Johnny Depp was going to star in this movie. Unfortunately, that was quickly dismissed as a rumor that Depp was only considered and not casted. Could you imagine though? Number 43. In 2010, it was rumored that the popular Filipina cosplayer Elodia Gosing Fio might make an appearance in the movie, but it doesn't seem like she made the final cut. Number 44. On September 23rd, 2013, it was also reported that actors Paul Dano, Travis Fimmel, Anson Mount, and Anton Yelkin were the shortlist for the film, but by October, Fimmel was announced to be the lead character. Number 45. On December 4th, 2013, the main cast of the film was announced, consisting of Fimmel, Ben Foster, Paula Patton, Dominic Cooper, Toby Kebbell, and Rob Kaczynski. On December 14th, 23rd, Universal added Daniel Wu and Clancy Brown to the cast of the film. 
Number 46. Fimmel will play the role of Lothar. If you've seen his portrayal on the History Channel's Vikings, you may say he's a pretty good fit for the role. Number 47. Two actors in the film, Ben Foster and Daniel Cudmore, moonlight as X-Men mutants Angel and Colossus, respectively. Number 48. Foster has also had roles in movies like 310 to Yuma, Pandorum, and The Finest Hours, and a brief stint on Freaks and Geeks. Talk about a diverse resume. Number 49. Cudmore is no stranger to nerddom, with roles in Stargate, SG-1, Halo 4, for Arrow and uh, Twilight? Number 50. Patton will be playing Garona. You may remember her from such films as Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, Two Guns, Precious, and as the woman in my dreams. Number 51. To prepare for her role, Patton had to learn how to ride a horse and fight with swords. This was a change from her usual backgrounds of guns and modern action. Number 52. Cooper, who plays King Lane, is most well known for playing Howard Stark in Captain America, the first Avenger, and Agent Carter. Number 53. Cooper is thrilled to be playing a good guy. He says, He's a good, solid, nice king. That's what I'm always playing, horrible people. And this is my challenge to actually play somebody who does properly care about his people and care about resolving this situation that he finds himself in. What, he didn't get enough of that with Howard Stark? Number 54. Kaczynski, who plays Ogram, is best known for his TV roles in EastEnders and True Blood, but he's also appeared in big budget sci-fi films like Pacific Rim. Number 55. You may think it'd be hard to relate to a giant monster like Orgrim, but Kaczynski says that an early shot of Orgrim watching his pregnant wife sleep will be the only only thing you need to understand where he's coming from. Number 56. Kaczynski revealed that in World of Warcraft, he mainly plays his horde Death Knight and actually has 463 play days in the game. Number 57. In fact, Kaczynski played so much World of Warcraft that a girlfriend once broke up with him. Hey, if she doesn't appreciate your mad Warcraft skills, Rob, she ain't worth it. Number 58. One more fact that proves Kaczynski's devotion to the games. While on the set of Pacific Rim, he recalls producers telling him to turn the game off while on the set. Why does everyone keep trying to interrupt his game, yo? Number 59. For such a seasoned orc warrior, Orgrim has very few fight scenes in the movie. Jones and Kaczynski realized this and added in a few more scenes just for Orgrim to prove himself. Number 60. One such scene involved Orgrim lifting a foe into the air and dropping him onto his own head. Jones called it an inclined headbutt and says that no professional choreographer would ever allow such a dumb move. Number 61. Toby Kebbell, who plays Duraton, is no stranger to motion capture. Before Warcraft, he played Koba in the film Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and gave an amazing performance if you haven't seen it. Number 62. Duraton actually didn't exist in Warcraft Orcs and Humans and he's never mentioned in the game or manuals. His character was originally from Warcraft Adventures, which Blizzard canceled. Number 63. Kebbell has a promising career ahead of him after Warcraft. He's already moved on to star in the new Ben-Hur remake and Kong Skull Island. Number 64. Terry Notary, who plays Goromesh Hellscream, is known for performing orc movements and even ended up teaching some of his co-stars how to do them. Number 65. What do SpongeBob, Highlander, Shawshank Redemption, and Warcraft all have in common? Clancy Brown. Not only is he Mr. Krabs, but he was also Victor Kruger in Highlander, Captain Hadley in Shawshank, and now Blackhand in Warcraft. Number 66. On the subject of female roles in the movie, Jones was quick to point out that World of Warcraft has a higher percentage of women players compared to other games. Knowing this, Jones and the team tried their best to maintain a balance, noting also that many key figures in the film are women and not even love interests. Number 67. The film's visual effects were provided by Industrial Light and Magic with over 1,000 visual effects shots taken. The ILM team took photographs and scans of the actors portraying orcs and integrated their images with concept art created by Blizzard's artists. Number 68. The visual effects supervisor for this movie, Bill Westenhofer, has won two Oscars for his work on The Life of Pi and The Golden Compass. Number 69. Westenhofer is a long-time world of Warcraft player and is mentioned getting up at 2 a.m. to raid with his guild while on film sets. Number 70. The film will use a hybrid of computer-generated imagery and live action with orcs being physically portrayed by actors in order to make them as emotive as any human character, according to Wessenhofer. Number 71. Maze Rubio, who is in charge of costumes and has worked on previous films like Avatar, World War Z, and John Carter of Mars. The woman knows fantastical clothing. Number 72. Paul Hirsch is the editor and has an all-star resume that includes work on Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. By the way, he won an Oscar for those last two. Number 73. Jones said his go-to guy for VFX was Jeff White. White's previous work includes the Hulk for the Avengers, so it's almost like the orcs have the same dad as the green super monster. Number 74. Raman Jawadi is the composer for the
the film. He's known for the score of Iron Man and Game of Thrones, so he knows all about fantasies and blockbusters. Number 75. The film takes place in Draenor and Azeroth, but filming took place primarily in Vancouver, among other locations, because the other ones don't exist. Not that Canada is any less magical, and it's definitely way more polite. Number 76. In the games, the dark portal between the two realms is typically represented by a loading screen. The movie has a chance to break away from the restraints like these and craft a world. A world of Warcraft. Number 77. The orc faction has a dialect created just for them in this movie. Apparently, an entire linguistics team was brought in to develop the language. Number 78. Blizzard contributed over 4,000 pieces of concept art for the movie. Among the artists is Wei Wang, who has contributed art to the world of Warcraft as well as Sons of the Storm. Number 79. Life-size weapons and suits of armor were built for the orcs, despite the orcs being played by actors via motion capture. This was mainly for photographic references, and so they could use them as props on the set. Number 80. The motion capture technology used in this film is so precise that the event that the smallest eyeball dilation is captured and applied to the digital characters. Number 81. To look like they were riding wolves, the actors sat on things that looked like rocking horses. That means that, yes, during Black Hand's emotional speech, Clancy Brown is just sitting on a rocking horse. I can't decide if this is the best thing I've ever heard or if it just ruins everything. Number 82. A lot of the effects of this film are CGI, but there are more practical effects than you realize. For example, the giant forest set is a real practical set that Jones had the team build in a soundstage. Number 83. The larger-than-life weapons and armor used in the film were made on a 3D printer. Weta Workshop's mastermind, Richard Taylor, the physical effects wizard who has a wheelbarrow full of Academy Awards from working on the Lord of the Rings, had a big hand in creating the weapons and armor for both the humans and orc armies. In order to build up such a massive arsenal, Taylor and his crew turned to 3D printing, helping to push the emerging technology into the mainstream. Number 84. One of Kaczynski's favorite props was the Doom Hammer. He would often contemplate stealing it when they had shots in the armory, with literally hundreds of practical pieces of armor and weapons on set. Although it's not exactly small enough to hide under your shirt, dude. Number 85. In 2014, Legendary released the official Warcraft movie logo, which is no longer the one they're using. Dang! Can this movie have any consistency? Number 86. Unfortunately, the Pandoreans from the Mist of Pandaria do not exist in the Warcraft movie universe. To be fair, who really liked them? Stick with Kung Fu Panda. Number 87. When asked how he brings humanity into a non-human experience, Jones says that he has worked with this theme before. Spoiler alert for the movie Moon. In that movie, Duncan's previous film, the main character character Sam is a clone and not a traditional human being. A similar type of plotline is used in Source Code, no spoilers, and in both films, Duncan Jones managed to make them empathetic. Number 88. To overcome the high expectations of the fans, Duncan Jones has worked hand in hand with Blizzard to make sure that every element that they could include was in. Both sides were very open to compromise, even when they weren't seeing eye to eye at all, to ensure a better movie for the fans. Number 89. Kaczynski praised the throne room set as being one of the most accurate in the movie, reflecting on it saying this is the throne room I've been here and I've spent time here and it was just like seeing a dream becoming a reality you know what I mean I do know what you mean dude number 90 although the two main races in the story are human and orcs we will likely see dwarves and trolls there was a rumor that night elves would also be in the movie even though they were in Kalimdor until the events of Warcraft 3 happened number 91 the movie notably does not include Thrall or Arthas two of the main characters from the Warcraft universe they could however make future appearances and sequels depending on the initial film's success. Number 92. After years and years and more years, the first teaser trailer for the film was released in November 2015, and it was only 16 seconds long. Four days later, a full trailer was released. Number 93. In April 2016, a trailer was released that used dubstep as its background music. Jones reassured everyone, though, that the movie itself would not feature any dubstep. Whew. Number 94. Jones has been documenting the production into a mini film he hopes to make into a making of DVD. No plans have been made for it yet, but just know it's out there. Number 95. The audience of BlizzCon 2014 has a special appearance in the film. Jones recorded Alliance and Horde crowds at the convention and used them in the film as war cry sounds. Number 96. The Golden Lion Inn is said to be featured in the film and will involve a sex scene. This is a subtle Easter egg in the game. There are PvE, player versus environment, PvP, player versus player, and RP, role play servers. Kaczynski described the RP servers as a collection of strange people who just role play around the inn playing as strippers, prostitutes, and the like and sell sex. Weird. Number 97. The film offered a good amount of flexibility while still following canon. Rob Pardo of Blizzard said, 
I think one of the exciting things about exploring the storyline that we're in is that the early games weren't really a great mechanism for telling this story, so it really allows the movie a lot of flexibility to kind of do the ultimate version of Warcraft history. Number 98. The movie will be PG-13, but we'll be pushing the envelope a little bit. During a BlizzCon 2013 panel, Jones compared it to the level of brutality seen in the Joker's pencil scene in the Dark Knight film. That kind of brutal, guys. Number 99. The film took 123 days to film and was in post-production for almost 20 months. Filming took place between January 13, 2014 and May 23, 2014. Number 100. The film was shot in 2D and will be converted to 3D upon release. Duncan expressed his concern, saying that shooting in 3D is very laborious, and while people might cringe at it, the conversion from 2D to 3D is being perfected every day to a point where he feels comfortable with the final product. Number 101. The film was originally scheduled to be released on December 18th, 2015, but following the announcement of the coinciding release of Star Wars Force Awakens, the release was pushed back to the following year. Smart move, guys. Number 102. The movie's long-awaited release year coincided with the passing of the director's father, the late David Bowie. After his father passed, Jones sent out a tweet saying he was going to take some time off of the post-production of the film. Number 103. Warcraft will be released alongside other 2016 video game adaptations including Angry Birds, Assassin's Creed, and and Ratchet and Clank. Chances are one of them will be good, right? Number 104. The budget for the Warcraft movie is over $100 million. For reference, the most expensive movie to date has been Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, which was $300 million. Number 105. If all goes well with this film, then Blizzard is hoping to make a TV series similar to Game of Thrones about Warcraft. Good, because Thrones may be ending soon and I will need to fill that hole in my heart when it leaves. Number 106. In an interview, Rob Kaczynski expressed the enormous difficulty in making a video game movie mainly that it's impossible to take hundreds of hours of gameplay and story and condense it into two hours. Number 107! Jones is very confident in this film, so much that he claims it will right the wrongs of previous video game movies. The wrongs, of course, being that they are all terrible. Here's hoping Warcraft finally breaks that mold. Thanks for watching Cinematica's 107 Facts You Should Know About Warcraft. Are you planning on seeing the movie? Sound off in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to check out some of our other 107 Facts videos by clicking the annotations or the links in the description. We have new videos dropping every single week, so let us know what you want us to cover next. And if you like getting more from your movies and TV, subscribe to Cinematica, where we help you watch smarter.